Now we can apply loss aversion to the effort provision setting. We have to distinguish two cases. Case one, in which we solve few tables, which means that we are better off when getting the fixed payment than getting the piece rate, which we'll look at first. And on the next slide, we will look at the second case in which we already solved many tables, which means that we are better off when being paid the piece rate than when being paid the fixed price, the fixed payment. Okay, I know this slide is very full of formulas, but we will go through it step by step. Let us first start in the first line. What we are going to do is we will look at the utility of a loss averse subject and we want to derive the optimal effort level, the optimal number of tables solved. So let's start in the first line with probability of 50%, so with chance of one half, we will be paid the fixed, uh, sorry, the uh, piece rate times the number of sliders, uh, the number of tables we saw. Also, with probability one half, we will receive the piece rate. In each case, we have to cover our effort costs, which is just C of E. And now we have to think about the two possible expectations. So we know that we can either get the fixed payments or the piece rate. Here, we will first look at the piece rate. So we look at the case in which we expected the piece rate. We expected the piece rate with probability one half. And then we can distinguish two cases. In both cases, we expected the piece rate with probability. In, in this case, again, with probability one half, we really get the piece rate. Then our reference point is just equal to the realization, and then this term is zero, or we expected the piece rate and instead got the fixed payment. Here, we are in the case where we are better off when receiving the fixed payment than the piece rate, which means this term is positive and we enjoy a psychological benefit from the gain. This part here represents a case where the piece rate was the reference point. Now we can turn to the other case. Again, also with 50% probability, the reference point is the fixed payment. In this case, with 50% probability, the actual payment is the fixed price, the fixed payment, and this is also what we expected. So then the actual payment and the reference point are the same. In this case, this is again zero. So we are left over with this case where we expected the fixed payment, but received the piece rate. And as the piece rate is smaller than the fixed payment, this is negative. This means we suffer a loss and as we suffer the loss, this has to be multiplied with eta times lambda, where lambda is the gain loss utility parameter, which tells us how much more we suffer from losses than we benefit from gains. Okay, so this is how we represent the situation in our utility function. Now in the next step, we are going to simplify this expression. You know, this is zero, this is zero, so we can, can summarize a bit. The payments, they stay the same. With probability one over four, we expected the piece rate to be paid, but received the fixed payment, which is better than our reference point, the piece rate. So in this case, we, we benefit. However, also with probability one over four, we expected to get the 
uh, fixed payment but only received the piece rate. In this case, we are worse off and we suffer from this difference, which means this is multiplied by eta and lambda. All right. Now we can further simplify this expression and we, we end up with this rather short expression for our utility. As you remember, we want to look for the optimal number of tables solved. So what we do is we derive the utility or we derive the uh, derivative of the utility with respect to the number of tables solved. And we end up with this term. So here the derivative is just uh, w over 2. Here the derivative is just c prime of e. And um, here the derivative is just 1 over 4 times eta times um, w times lambda minus 1. Okay, when we reformulate this expression, so we are taking the derivative and as the first order condition implies that this must be equal to zero, we can then rearrange it and, and get this expression for the optimal for the optimal effort level. Remember that we are in the case where we solved few tables, which means e is rather small because w times e is still smaller than f. When we now look at the effect of loss aversion on the optimal level of effort provision, what we can see is that increasing the importance of loss aversion, which means either increasing eta or increasing lambda, implies that we want to exert more effort. Okay, This means the stronger the loss aversion, the more effort I want to provide in case that given the current provision of effort, I will get more when receiving the fixed payment than when receiving the piece rate. 